Hi everyone. In this case study, I want to show it doesn't matter how much we have experience and what degree we have. If we don't have enough and correct knowledge, we will make a lot of mistakes. Let's do it. Here is a case uh, 58 years old with hypertension and progressive uh, dyspnea, uh, shortness of breath during activity. The tech did uh, these plaques, as you can see and measure uh, diastolic IVS and posterior wall IVS 12 millimeter, posterior wall 11, and the wall 11 fraction based and on the uh, fraction. and systole measuring LVID systolic, machine give 80%. And the cardiologist uh, reports uh, patient has moderate to severe, based on this picture, severe myocardial hypertrophy and suspicious about endomyocardial fibrosis. Now let's see what those are mistakes were and how we can prevent from them. Let's go with uh, first with the optimizing. As you can see here, uh, the compression or dynamic range is uh, very low. What does mean uh, make it more black and white. I guess this tech has some uh, vascular experience because as you can see here, uh, this, I'm not sure my, is my color is black, completely black, dark, high, on echo almost, but based on the pericardium, I can guess this is my myocardium and this hyperecho line is endocardium that is thickening. It looks like here too. Uh, so this is dynamic range is very low. You have to increase it. And another one is again, and you can see bright shining everywhere. Even here is myocardium a little show, uh, but it's shiny and very bright. So gain is high, dynamic is uh, very low. As a general rule, you're, you're optimizing about the gain and dynamic range should uh, show that myocardium mid gray that is your landmark and uh, how you can optimize those two so myocardium should be mid gray if you are not sure go put your probe on the right upper parastern uh, right upper quadrant over the liver the equationicity of the liver is mid gray if you optimize there your gain and dynamic range, you will be fine for the heart and go do your uh, on the for echo. That is the trick that I give you. But anyway, just when you optimizing image, don't make it dark and white. So 50 to 53 is the best dynamic range uh, or compression for the echo, especially on the uh, plaques and gain shouldn't be too much bright and shining. So background, those on echo area should be background of the monitor. What about the plane? On the plane, as you can see, general rules is that we go for the plaques that we don't see papillary muscle. As you can see here, papillary muscle, all insertion and up to the tip and corda tendon show up. And it showed me uh, this take has been completely off axis. And the reason you can see kissing the wall, it is too. And so uh, when you are off axis, 100 person, you're overestimating uh, for the ejection fraction, for wall thickening, and all those uh, measurements. So that is your landmark. And beside of that, you go, if you don't see popular muscle, you think that is right, go to the bits. Uh, the bits has largest uh, diameter on diastole and systole. That will be your bits or cycle of heart bits that you are going to measure uh, for those IVS, LVID, and so on. As you can see here, during systole, apex, comes move from here to the almost to the base here this is mitral valve apex it show here and you can say okay it's 100 percent overestimating this is another tip that you know you are off access uh, now let's go for measurement 
as I explained on the another uh, clip on uh, tips and mistake on for measurement on plaques, the first rule for uh, measuring on the plaques is that we have to have correct uh, view or plane, and the correct view or plane. A plane doesn't ha show a popularity muzzle. If popularity muzzle show up on your uh, plaques, uh, that is your off axis, and you shouldn't measure on that. As you can see here, insertion of popularity muzzle after the tube and even cord tendon is show up. So this is off axis, and any measurement in off axis, hundred percent overestimating thickness, ejection fraction, everything, and underestimating left ventricle. Uh, diameter in the ostol. So that is the first one. The second one is that when we have a sigmoid, we don't measure at the level of the sigmoid. Sigmoid, as you know, is a uh, uh, sigmoid septum here, is uh, common in the hypertensive people and old people. And in those cases, we go beyond the uh, sigmoid here, not here. And as a general rule, again, perpendicular to the wall. Here is almost correct perpendicular, but still a little off. We can measure this way, but it's not a big deal, maybe one millimeter differences. And when you are not sure here, I am not sure, is that corda tendini or endocardium? In that case, just a senior loop, go back and forth and see your endocardium, make sure you border of endocardium, then measure it. And the uh, uh, for here, you can measure separately sig uh, sigmoid, another measurement, and annotated sigmoid that show there is a significant uh, sigmoid. And the, another mistake here, because optimizing is not correct, I don't see the border other side starting of this myocardium. Is that this spot is here or there? By, based on the senior loop here to the live, as you can see, there are a lot of trabeculation because this is off axis, and so off axis, you cannot see the border at the ventricular side of the IVS. So when you don't see the border, don't measure it. Very easy. Leave it there. Just go measure here, here to here, perpendicular to the left axis, uh, LVID, the ostol, and posterior wall septum. How you can measure the IVS? Generally, I'm going to shortly explain, always go and compare your measurement with the PZAX. Here, again, we don't measure at the level of the sigmoid for the plaques. Whenever you don't have a good uh, view on the plaques for measurement, or you are not sure is that your measurement correct or not, always go to the PZAX. Because in PZAX, you can make it circular shape completely. You know you are correct axis. Then go in the osteolic and measure it. Here you can see in this patient, don't include trabeculation. And our measurement is 7 millimeter. 5 millimeter differences. That is the reason. Always, always. When you do measure plaques, if you are a little suspicious about your measurement, come to the PZAX at the same level, wherever you want, go from the basal to the apex and check your myocardial thickness. As you can see in this patient here, because it's lateral wall, on PZAX, I don't judge based on lateral walls because the resolution to the drop, but here is almost, almost a good view, good uh, resolution, and I can measure correctly my uh, myocardium and even you can notice even the uh, gain and optimizing is not good but thickening of endocardium is here obvious and another finding here is too much uh, trabeculation uh, it gives some impression of we called it non-compact cardiomyopathy too much uh, trabeculation and myocardial thickness actually here almost very thin as you can see here even contraction is good. Uh, on this case, is a little against uh, non-compact cardiomyopathy, uh, but still you can see endocardium a little thickening. You can appreciate that myocardium even here is thinning, as you can see 
here you cannot judge based on the physics concept. Even in those cases that you don't have, still you are suspicious, still you can do this uh, measurement uh, on the apical, even uh, we don't recommend it. Just in those cases, you are still suspicious. Is those wall we segment, is that thickening or not? Even I am overestimating here, still sec uh, septum is 8 millimeter, not 12 millimeter. Here, trabeculation, you don't measure trabeculation. Myocardium is here. Here to here, your myocardium, you can see, especially at mid segment here. So, uh, in those cases, just be flexible and use all those knowledge and uh, technique that you learn and you will not have any problem for detecting any abnormality or uh, misconfuse for uh, diagnosis. This patient here doesn't have any uh, calcification of endocardium. As you can see, there is not posterior shadow. That shortly I am going to explain about that uh, matter, what does mean. Endocardial hypertrophy that we can see on the echo, maybe thickening hyper echo uh, endocardium, as you saw on this patient, has usually uh, two cause, two diagnoses, two differential diagnoses. One of them is endocardial fibroelastosis. Endocardial fibroelastosis is a pileup of the elastin and collagen in the endocardium and over 90% of the cases uh, happen in the pediatric group and in adult uh, is rare and the typical uh, pattern of the uh, echo and CT scan is hyper echo uh, line and thickening of the endocardium plus uh, calcification in the endocardium that cause posterior shadow you can see appreciate in uh, different uh, window and on CT scan it give you a specific characteristic pattern in the calcification on the CT scan and those pe uh, people usually are can represent with the restrictive cardio uh, uh, cardiomyopathy or moral thrombosis uh, that uh, can happen usually at apex or any other spot, congestive heart failure, and so on. And they can be primary, secondary. I'm going to uh, prepare uh, another lecture about these two issues. The another one that you have to remember is uh, endomyocardial fibrosis. They are a little close to each other, but completely to different entity. Uh, and uh, here, beside of the endocardium, we have uh, some kind of fibrosis in the myocardium too. And usually they uh, 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 express and present with the dilated uh, atrium and restrictive cardiomyopathy and uh, heart failure, uh, thrombosis. In both cases, eosinophilic, hyper eosinophilic endocard, uh, endocardial can be one of them. Uh, that is uh, too much. I am going to talk about that later. But in the old people, sometimes we see uh, some thickening uh, endocardium, even young people. That is uh, sporadic and scattering. There is not calcification and there are not other company finding light. Uh, atrial or ventricular disorder that is beyond this uh, case presentation. Up to the next time, have a wonderful time.